Okay, so we're here to record a focus, but we have no booze because we forgot to buy it. But we're still going to get hype because we're talking about how cats are going to take over the world. Woo. Ordinarily, this is when I pour myself a drink, as Brad explained the premise of the video. Um, but I can't do that, so do you want to just explain it while I stand here awkwardly? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of today's video is talking about how cats could take over the world, like they've got their own... What is yeah. it? Headquarters? Yeah, cats would do it their own way. So we've talked before about how reptiles would take over the world, how dogs would take over the world, sea creatures, birds, but I think cats, they wouldn't do it through force because cats, like, you know, they're quite wily creatures. Like They're known for their guile, their stealth. So I don't think an animal takeover involving cats would be like a violent overthrowing of humanity. I think it would be a surgical strike to the jugular presumably starting with every domestic house cat in the world simultaneously slitting the throat of its owner at once because you know cats would do it. Like, would you, like, you look, you've got cats and you look them in the eyes and you think, in a heartbeat, this thing would kill me. And the only reason it sticks around is because I feed it. It's like, Nisha, it's happening. You'd be one of the first victims of the cat takeover. It's one of the things where they look all cute and cuddly and fuzzy, but secret. they're really smart creatures. Yes. They're just plotting to kill you. See? At all times. I think the way I've heard it put is the reason cats are so angry is because they're nature's perfect killing machine and we keep trying to pick them up. Yeah. And that's pissing them off. So I think the first thing that would happen if cats took over the world is just immediately every person who owns a domestic house cat is fucking dead when the cats simultaneously slit all. So I'm sorry, Nisha, you're immediately, you're, you're gone. You're a casualty of this war before it even begins. And I'm just now thinking, like, what would the cats use? Because, like, cats don't have much in terms of muscle, save for like tigers, lions, and cheetahs, do they? Yeah. And like, what role would each of the big cats serve, do you think? So, because obviously, like, tigers and lions would have to be the, like, you know, the muscle. They'd be like, they're the shock troops, the ones that, like, you know, go into battle first. And the little house cats, they're the spies. They've got to be the spies. And then you have, like, the, the in between cats, like, the lynxes, the panthers. So, like I said, this is, it's going to be a battle fought with stealth. Yeah. Because cats are well known for their bit, like, it's, it's like they are. Like ninjas. And... They are, yeah. All the cats would be ninjas. Like, all wooded areas would instantaneously become off limits to all humans because you don't know how many fucking tigers are in there. Right, and the thing is that you think we'd be safe in England, but we're not. It's got the beast of fucking Bodmin Bull to worry about, haven't we? <laughs> Which, for people who don't know, do you want to explain that to Americans who might not know? Like, what the beast of Bodmin Moor is? It's just basically a myth about this panther that lives down south yeah, or something and it just, like that. it just stalks the moors and eats people and obviously <laughs> as a result all cats from myth legend and fiction are fair game to be drafted into the cat army and i'm just now thinking like if the beast of bodmy moor was real i'd be fucking terrified to leave my house because every few years you see in the news oh it's been spotted again uh, and it's like a blurry photo and they have like some expert come in and say oh yeah i judge it to be about 14 foot long like, what the fuck is this foot it's long. not boys it's nothing like, it gets made up it's like so it's our version of Bigfoot, so people swear it's real. And, and you know what? Cats taking over the world, it's fucking real. And the beast of Bobby Moss has some legends swing up around it. Because cats are known to be quite smart yeah. creatures. Yeah, because you mentioned like, it's stealth that they probably win by. Yeah, I say I, I think they'd be more tactical. They, they wouldn't would. like, use muscle or strength or anything like that. They no, would plan yeah. stuff, yeah, like sort of thing. secret agents. I think a war with cats would be like a war with Skynet in Terminator, where humanity doesn't even know that Skynet's planning to fight it. And it just starts when every nuke in the world goes off and kills like three quarters of the population instantaneously. And what I'm imagining is there would be a council of cats where all like, you know, the famous legendary cats from fiction plan. I want to ask you now, Nisha, who would lead the council of cats? What fictional cat would command enough respect to be able to like, you know, lead this army to victory? I'm thinking you definitely, you'd need a cat that could talk. Yes, because it need, even though it could be understood by its brethren, it needs yeah. to be understood by humanity. It needs to tell us, like, you know, this is what's happening, deal. Yeah. So there's like a couple of choices, really. You could yeah. go with Salem from Sabrina. Yeah, the thing is, though, Salem, he's too power hungry. Yeah. I don't think he has, like, you know, the tactical ability. He's, he's got the ambition, certainly, because he wants to take over the world. Yeah. And he has the ability, if he managed to turn back human, at which point it'd be fair game for the cat. But I don't think he's cut out to be a leader. He'd be more in, like, an advisory role, which would largely be ignored, because his advice would always be, take over the world, take over the world. <laughs> So we need a wiser, more. So we need a wiser cat than Salem to lead. I feel. Would you, would you think um, Mr. Tinkles from Cats and Dogs? Again, again, like he's. Um, you can't fault his ambition. Yeah. Again, take over the world, but he fails in those movies. Like he is not like he is not a tactical leader. He's too 
I think it's, it's ego. So it's a problem that like pride and ego are a problem that plague all cats. I think we need, and I think Aslan is the only choice. We know he's got experience commanding an army. So he obviously commands the armies of Narnia. And we know that he has the ability to rally different peoples with different ideas to his cause through sheer force of personality. And I'm now imagining like a sat on the council of cats, like on his big throne, but above even Aslan would be a mural of Mufasa in the clouds. The wisest of all the cats gone before his time. Like they'd all pledge to it. Uh, they'd also have like, a meeting so, so who will be sat on this council advising Aslan on his next move we've already said we've got Mr Tinkles yeah. we've got Sailor imagine Mr Tinkles being annoying he just would, the annoying but, one but he did try and take over the world and his advice yeah. would be welcome and I'm now thinking as well there are several other cats from fiction mm -hmm. who while not having any magical powers or the ability to speak do have experience on how to run like, you know, a criminal empire or take over the world. And we have, like, you know, and we have Mr. Bigglesworth from Austin Powers, yeah. who worked with Dr. Evil. We have, I'm not sure, but Blofeld's cat from James Bond, like, you know, who Mr. Bigglesworth is based on. And then we have the Godfather cat that Marlon Brando, like, you know, has on his lap. And then all of those cats have intimate first-hand knowledge of how to run an evil empire and or criminal enterprise. And the thing is that we need a translator. Is there a cat from fiction who has the ability to interact with other creatures who can't speak? Because obviously in the cats and dogs universe, all cats and dogs can talk. Yeah. And there's no saying that when obviously you brought a normal cat into their world, they could communicate with them properly. The best fictional cat for that would be Meowth then, because he can communicate with both. He can, because he can communicate with Pikachu and all the other Pokemon who can't speak. Which means that he has the innate ability to understand the cries of wild fucking animals, which in our world would include ordinary cats like Mr. Bigglesworth. And there he has it. And that way you have the combined knowledge of like the Godfather, Blofeld, and Doctor Evil, and the inner machinations of their like, evil criminal empires at your disposal. Oh, so good. Meowth will be the translator. So we have the organisational and the translation side sorted, but this council needs more cats. There need to be more voices in this room to guide Aslan towards victory. <laughs> so are there any other cats you think? I, I'd say we need someone who's more diplomatic. Like, what cat could be more diplomatic, like, you know, to help the diplomatic side? Because obviously, all the cats on that side are going to, like, take over the world, kill everybody. Yeah. And that's not the way Aslan's going to do things. Yes, I feel like we need, like, a voice of reason to guide Aslan, to, you know, the gentle guiding hand that, you know, turns him away from genocide somewhat, because that's what Salem would want. Could you use Tigger, maybe? Tigger's probably a good one, because like, he could be a positive guiding hand for Aslan, so he doesn't steer as hard into taking over the world in the most violent manner possible, which is, I'm guessing, what all the other cats would want. And in that vein, we'll say, like, Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbes. I don't think they would be on the council. They would be like religious advisor types yeah. where like Aslan takes into account their advice, but ultimately the decision's his. And there's like, they're just like the ones who whisper in his ear. Like this council needs some muscle. So I'm gonna say Shere Khan. As much as we're gonna expect Aslan to like try and take over with diplomacy as well as just a surgical strike on all throats at once, he does need some protection. So Shere Khan is his assassin, his personal assassin. He's gonna have, obviously you have the Royal Guard. Yeah. And the leader of the Royal Guard has to be Puss in Boots with his little hat. And his little boots now have to be gold because fuck it, this is my imagination. <laughs> so who would be on the Royal Guard protecting, like, you know, the Cat Council? What cats would Puss in Boots have under his command in addition to, like, you know, Sheer Khan? So I'm thinking maybe Shiva from Walking Dead, the big tiger from that. I'm thinking Battle Cat from He-Man just throws off his master and just joins the fray on the side of the cats. So who else can be on this elite squad of Royal Guards tasked with protecting, like, you know, King Aslan? I think those ninja cats from the Cats and Dogs. No, I think you mean the really racist ninja cats from Cats and Dogs. Because that accent is not fucking... That has not yeah, aged well. I'm Please put a clip in of that. Thing is, though, where do you fall on the line of, like, most racist cat? So I know it's got nothing to do with it, but the ones in Cats and Dogs, they're bad. But I, I sometimes wave, like, is the ones from... Is it Lady and the Tramp? Yeah, the Siamese the, ones. The Siamese cats. Is it, they sing, we are so Siamese. Yeah. They might, like, I think they even have like the book teeth in. Yeah. Then you have like the Aristocats, where they have that brief interlude in one of the songs, where someone literally puts the rice bowl on their head with the book teeth, and then they play with the chopsticks. Oh my god, I forgot about that. So what's that. the most racist cat? Ooh. Do you know what? This should have been the focus. Which cat is most? Racist. Which fictional cat is most racist? <laughs> uh, you know what? Oh they god. can all join in. I'm going to put all those cats on this royal guard because I hope they get killed in the first five minutes of the battle. Because those, like, those cats do not make the rest of cat kind look good. I know we're talking about taking over humanity, but that's just racist, man, don't do that. I know 
who's going to be on this royal guard? So we've got Puss in Boots, like, you know, master of the sword, but yeah. you want the master of the fist, and who better than Tai Fu? From the old PS1 game, like Tai Fu Legend of the Fist, yeah. where you play as a Kung Fu tiger who yeah. fights, like, with Kung Fu. And I want him to wear armour like he's in a Dynasty Warriors game or some shit, <laughs> as he's just stood, the silent sentinel, just watching over the battlefield as it happens. Just like, oh no, Tai Fu has entered the battle. You'd have to team up though. What's the cat who does Kung Fu from Kung Fu Panda? I can't remember the name, but yeah, Kung Fu Panda Cat. <laughs> the Kung Fu Panda Cat. They can be like, they can train the forces. Yeah. Like Tai Fu will be the yeah. lead, yeah, the trainer, because he knows like the hidden martial arts, so does she. And then it's like, like I said, they make the most powerful couple in the world. So we've got the Council of Cats, we've got the people who protect them. So we know now they have the organisational skills and just the knowledge and ability to, like, you know, launch this first strike on humanity. And I think it's under the leadership of Aslan, guided by all those other cats, there's no way they can lose. So let's say the cats have taken over and we are under their rule. Who do the cats put in charge of propaganda? Who do they have on the TV telling humanity it's not all that bad? Because there's only one person I'm thinking, oh. and I'm hoping it's the same one. Oh, and he's a guy who sells frosted flakes. Oh, Tony the Tiger, because, of course, yeah. Can you imagine? You get the thing like, hey humans, I know you're all toiling in our <laughs> underground sugar mines, but you know what? It's great. That's <laughs> because it is gonna be great. Yeah, that's what you have. <laughs> like you're just there, and this is like all the cats overseeing humans, just like, you know, toiling away to like, you know, build yarn balls for them and stuff like that. And you just got like Tony the Tiger in like hologram form, just booming over cityscapes saying, they're great. Like um, that scene in Futurama where Bender <laughs> builds the giant statue himself. There's also that episode in Futurama where cats, I guess they do take over sort of. Mm. I think they're from a different planet. Okay. And their planets stop rotating. So then they go to Earth to steal the Earth's rotation. <laughs> And once again, you have a fluffy white cat that's Leads, in lead, Yeah, leading everything. You know what? That cat can also be on the Council of Cats. Bring them in. That's a strong fucking cat right there, but oh my god, that's so good. And they, they come in like a little cat head alien <laughs> spaceship. Yeah, they could be on the Council too. <laughs> just the idea though, we're just there. It's like in the field, like no, creating milk and stuff like that. And just giant Tony the Tiger <laughs> holograms just over cityscape blaring. It's great. <laughs> And you can just imagine like an old and an old Tony the Tiger sat in a wheelchair looking out over his window going, this is not what I wanted it to become. <laughs> the thing is that there'd have to be a cat resistance. Humanity would not take this lying down. Like, who do we send in to like, you know, try and take him down? Because there, there would be some human sympathizers amongst these cats. The first among them being Tony the Tiger. Mm -hmm. I think he would see how his image was being used and try and help us. But like, do we have any like cat people, like cats who could help us, like you know, try and take back I, the world? The one that comes to mind, I don't think he's actually got a name. He's just known as the cat in the hat. Because, the cat in the hat. Yeah, because in the actual films, he's there to help like the kids. In the cat in the hat, he would help he, us. He like they create a mess and stuff, and he basically uses some sort of magic. To and you know it. what? Half of humanity being wiped out is a pretty fucking big mess that we need yeah, help cleaning so, up. Yeah, you know, he'd be able to help. Hopefully. Oh man. The thing is, I think as well, we have a spy in the last best hope of humanity being Professor McGonagall. Oh, of course. We'd have Professor yeah. McGonagall who could turn into a cat and sneak in, mm -hmm. and then Mrs. Norris, Filch's cat, because that is a cat that is just so dedicated to their master, I don't think they'd betray him. Mm -hmm. And I think they would infiltrate, you know, like the Council of Cats alongside Professor McGonagall, yeah. and they'd have to take out Aslan. And without the wise and leadership of Aslan, I think the cats would just descend care amongst infighting. Is that they're such naturally selfish creatures. And then all that turns up out, and obviously once that collapse, then it's just a matter of get a big broomstick and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the jungles will still be off limits. They belong to their tigers, but you know what that can happen. <laughs> just imagine that now, just, oh, just assassin Mrs. Norris. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the McGonagall casts a spell on Mrs. Norris to put a bomb inside her. <laughs> Just Mrs. Norris goes up to like Aslan and he's like, Oh, what can I help you with? Like, do you like um, Daenerys? And she's getting like this public, where she invites the public to come, like, you know, air their grievances to her. And Mrs. Norris just explodes. <laughs> just looks back and you see Filch looking through the window like this as Mrs. Norris just detonates like that wheelchair in Justice League. <laughs> just takes everybody out. <laughs> Oh man, let's touch a strong image. Mrs. Norris loves Filch so much, she'll just fucking kamikaze Aslan. 
oh, man, I, I love these videos because they, they go so many places. <laughs> I'm trying to think like I'm oh. just like imagining like this boardroom just full of so many different cats that are yeah. just there like you've got Pink Panther <laughs> yeah Tom, the Pink Panther oh yeah the Pink Panther would be there Tom and Joe would be the one who t like Top cat. obviously Tom would be there teaching them how to like you know trap humans yeah he's like using his like variety of gadgets and his experience and stuff like that so, oh my god no you know what no Tom Tom will be on our side because Tom is completely faithful to his human master in the, uh, the cartoons he hails from so Tom would be on our side yeah Absolutely 100% because obviously he follows his master without question and so would Sylvester. The Pink Panther, not so much. I'm not sure. What about um, I'm not Garfield? Sure. Garfield will give a fuck. Garfield will just, he just sit there. Mm, like, lasagna. like the lazy fat piece of shit he is. He don't he give a fuck. Chef. He can be the chef. He don't be any shit. He's not doing no work. <laughs> he'd just sit there and let, he'd let. He would just observe. He would, he would observe it like a bored king. Yeah. Watches his like, you know, kingdom just fall into ruins. As long as he's got his lasagna and he's sat on his ass, he don't give a shit. Like Garfield would watch the world burn and laugh about it. And all you would ever hear, and the only words you'd hear come from his lips would be, I hate fucking Mondays. So you've got Mrs. Norris just going in to take out Aslan, and you've got Phil going, there must be another way, there must be another way. And so we're sorry. Is they like magic and ICBM to be really small and feed it to <laughs> <laughs> Because you love cats so much, you have to edit all this. <laughs> just, just the image of a little cat just walking up. <laughs> okay, we should have drank for this one.